Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over two things. The first most important is we're going to go over how to get funded with Apex, how to pass. So I'm going to share a trading strategy that's profitable that you can use to pass prop firms and start making real money with $50 to $100 of your own money. Second, we'll go over the accounts for the Apex Trader Funding Series, where we're going to show where our 17 funded accounts are at. I personally traded 17 PA accounts with my two personal accounts and the purpose of the series is just to get to the first withdrawal so that way we can see that we can make thousands of dollars a month with only a couple hundred dollars of our own money by using profits if you have a profitable strategy and you're a profitable trader. So without further ado, let's dive into it. We're going to go over the accounts. So here was the uh, end of week one, real quick in case you're new here. So. You can see right here, Apex, none of these are PA accounts. One is a PA account. That's the end of the first week. And you can see most of the balances are at 51,000. You have to get the balance to 53,000. Then you pass it becomes PA. Here's the end of week two. You can see that we have two PA accounts and then a lot of them are sitting at 1,700 in profit. And then end of week three, we move on to 2,700 in profit. And we now have one, two, three, four, five, six PA accounts. After that, we go to the end of week four and we can see that we have all PA accounts and one that is a 250K account that's not PA. So 17 PA accounts, we blew one of them. We had 18 uh, 50K accounts, we blew one, had 17 PA accounts. And then I bought a couple more 250K accounts. So we had three 250Ks and here are the PA accounts. Uh, had a couple losing weeks, so the balance was below 50,000 on the PA accounts, but trading 1750k pa accounts end of week six i think this is when the issue happened no not yet so we made we made some money and you can see these 250k accounts we have to get them to 265 for the, to pass them so we have three of them here and we have the 1750k accounts uh, we made a few hundred back so just about break even and this is where i had a huge issue with the trade copier and I got stuck in a trade and uh, had a 1K loss on every single account because I couldn't close my position. Took about 40, 40 or 50 points of NQ drawdown. Wasn't able to close the position. I'll link that video up in the cards. It's extremely important if you're going to trade 20 accounts. But you can see the accounts are then in rough shape. And then ever since then, I had to super reduce my size. I had to trade a one third of the size I normally trade. And I've just been chopping around because last week you can see uh, we lost, uh, we were break even uh, that week. And then this week we had a losing week and we lost about $200. The PA accounts are now at about anywhere from around, you know, 1200 in drawdown to 1800 in drawdown, essentially meaning that I have around $600 in room on some accounts up to about $900 in room. Uh, possibly a thousand, but most likely uh, 900. So I have anywhere from 600 to 900 room, and these 250k accounts, um, I actually canceled them because I didn't want them to renew. I'm gonna wait till I get the first withdrawal from Apex before I continue paying them because they're they're about to renew, and I, I, it's actually old. I, I canceled it. I didn't didn't blow the accounts, but I'm just not renewing it because. I want to get the first payout from these 17 accounts first, and that's what the series is about, before I invest in more and get to a maximum, which is 20 accounts. So uh, yeah, small down week, but we are in really critical zones right now. That's why my my size is extremely small. Let's go over what we are looking for, right? So we want to see what how, how can you pass Apex Trader funding, and let me show you how. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're using the five-minute market structure and the one-minute for uh, a one minute to see. We're, we're looking for a five minute shift in market structure. Also, if you're unaware on th these terms, I made a, a trading guide for you, like showcasing the strategies and how I personally trade. So I'll link that up in the cards. And honestly, if you watch that video alone, you'll be able to get everything funded and pass. But I'll go over it more in depth here. So I'm, I'm, uh, what I'm looking for is I'm watching the five minute market structure. Once there's a change in the market structure on the five minute, I'm watching the one minute, uh, I'm watching for a retracement and then I'm watching for the one minute to have a, a shift in market structure in the direction that I want. So uh, best way I can showcase that is by looking at the charts here. So let's just say we go back to uh, Friday, just this past day, I'll explain what we're looking at. So you'll see here 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Uh, the left is a five minute chart, right here is a one minute chart. 
what we're looking for is a break in market structure in the five minutes. So we were bullish here, we broke at 8.30, went bearish, and then pushed down. And from here, since we're since we're bearish and it's all pre-market, we're gonna wait for a shift in market structure to be bullish. Once we get the shift, then we're gonna wait for a pullback into an order block and then one minute shift back up. So what that would look like is if we sold off here, we wanna see when do we go bullish again. So we wanna get above an important swing high to the left. And here's one here. So we made a lower low, we made a lower high, a lower low, and then closed back above this high. We broke this high on this 9.30 candle. We went bullish at the end of the 9.30 candle uh, on the five minute chart. So all we're looking for is a pullback on the one minute chart, at put in a higher low, and then an engulfing again. So here is the example, right? 9.35 is the end of this 9.30 candle. So after 9.35, we want to look for a pullback on the one minute and then a higher low engulfing. Where do we see that? So 9.35 is right here. Now we have a push, push, push. We want to see a pullback on the one minute. This is a pullback. And we want to see a higher low engulfing. This is a higher low engulfing. Why is this higher low engulfing? Because we, we've been engulfing, engulfing, engulfing. Pulled back. This isn't an engulfing. This is also not an engulfing, but this is an engulfing. So this is our entry. Why is this our entry? Because we just went bullish here and we want to wait for the first pullback on the one minute and then an engulfing because that is basically the start of a big move. So all you do is we would be putting in our long and there's two ways of going about this. One is putting the stops below the swing low on the five minute and that's what I typically do but I don't allow myself to have a hundred point stop loss, so I wouldn't do that necessarily in this case. Uh, first thing uh, is you can go for a two to one instead. So if I was going for the two to one, I would just put my stop loss below the swing low, and then my target would be two to one of the stop loss. So that would look like a 19 point stop loss and then a 40 point target, and that would hit TP and we'll pull back. So. Then the next trade isn't an opportunity until you get a shift in market structure again, bearish, because I'm only I'm only looking for the shift and then getting in on the one minute. So we wouldn't get in again until market structure shifted back bearish on the five minute. There was a retracement again on the one minute and then short the first lower high engulfing if you're taking it in the opposite direction. So that's just a classic example of one example. and. All we're looking for is one or two trades a day, and, and that's usually what sets up. So I only trade 9.30 to 12, and then 2 to 3 p.m. So in this 9.30 to 12 period, we wanna see, hey, does, does market structure shift to bearish again? And let's watch. So here, we're, we're, we're just trending up, we're chomping up, still bullish on the five minute, pulled back into an order block, still bullish, still bullish, still bullish. You could argue here, 12.40, we went bearish, but I don't trade at that time. So we would ignore that. Uh, and then we would look at the two to three period and you'd see, all right, when do we go bullish again? Well, we actually do go bullish right here. 2.10, we go bullish. So then at 2.15, because the close of 2.10 is 2.15, we go look at the one minute chart at 2.15 and we'll see if we can get a higher low bullish engulfing after some sort of pullback. So let's go over to 215 on the one minute. 215 is right where my mouse is here. Perfect. So we watch for a pullback. This is the pullback. Higher low engulfing. Boom. Higher low engulfing is right here. So we get in a long stop losses below the swing low. Uh, and then we have to get in a two to one. So same idea. Two to one would be at 38 points. And then here is where it doesn't work out, right? You get stopped out. Uh, we get a push up. You know, went about 20 points. Yeah, 20 points. Took out the liquidity to the left, but then came back out, down, and stopped you out. But the point is, is I've tested this, and it's it's much more than a 50% win rate. And you're using two to one risk reward ratio. So a two to one risk reward ratio with over a 50% win rate is very good. That is a very profitable strategy. So even if you say you move stops to break even after a one to one, or you move stops to break even after the sweep of liquidity which would make a ton of sense. And honestly, that is something I would do. 
There's a sweep of liquidity. I'm either taking a partial or I'm moving stops to break even. Why? Because after the sweep of liquidity, it can totally come in the opposite direction and take liquidity on the other side. So the safest thing is to move stops to break even or take a partial as soon as we, we take out the liquidity. But even on Friday, even if you didn't, it wouldn't matter because the first trade on Friday was 40 points. This one is 19 points. So on the day, you're up 21 points. 21 points for the day. You do some simple math. Uh, if you're using Apex, you're trading a 50K account, you're using one or two contracts. Uh, if you wanna be really safe, you're using one contract. So 21 points times one con is $420. So you made $420 in one trading day. Uh, if you traded the morning only, you made a lot more. You actually made $800 if you trade the morning only. But if let's say you took you trade both the times like I do, you made four hundred twenty dollars in one trading day using an account that costs you fifty fifty dollars. So just do the math: fifty dollars, four hundred dollars in one day. Um, honestly, this happens every day, so you can multiply this by four, and you're sure to average one thousand per week. So if you just average the one thousand per week, trading the one contract, you can see why and how you can get funded in two weeks. Because the profit target is 3,000. So if you do one contract, you wanna be safe, you, know, you get funded in three weeks. If you wanna be more aggressive, you do two contracts and you get funded in one or two weeks. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate that and let me know if you wanna see more examples of this. I'll go over one more trading day just because I'm, I'm not trying to cherry pick a day and say, hey, look, uh, it works, right? So let's go over one more day. These videos are gonna be a lot longer if I go over this all the time, but uh, before I go into the second day, let's go over to the risk of ruin calculator because if you just look at the stats, if you have a 50% win rate and you're using one contract, let's say your average trade, the stop loss is going to be 20 points and the take profit is going to be 40 points on average. That would mean that with one contract, the risk per trade is is 0.8% uh, because 1% is $500. So 0.8% is $400 which is what the equivalent of two, 20 points is. So you take the 20 point stop loss and your, your risk reward is two to one because your average TP is 40 points. Uh, this, op, this, this happens about 10 times a week. There's usually about 10 opportunities per week. So in one week, um, you wanna see, okay, what's the chances of me blowing up? What's the chances of, of me having a certain level of profit? So you just press calculate after that. And you'll see there's a 2% chance of peak to valley drawdown, which means there's a 2% chance of blowing up in a week. Um, but what's most likely to happen there is a 50% win rate of two to one. I'll just do some simple math real quick. So you win you win half the trades, right? So you have five wins of 40 points, which is 200 points of profit, but then you have five losses of 20 points, which is 100 points in losses, and it becomes net 100 points. So on average, it averages 100 points per week because there's 10 opportunities per week. The risk reward ratio is two to one. Uh, typically the stop loss is 20 points. Typically the take profit is 40 points. So net net on average long term, it's 100 points per week on average. You use one contract that's 2000 per week. You use two contracts that's 4000 per week, right? However, with that risk, if you go super long term, the chances of peak to valley drawdown after 100 trades is 46%. So at that point you say, okay, maybe I don't wanna do one contract, maybe I wanna do half a contract. Half a contract, it's not gonna happen, you won't blow the account, and half a contract, you'll make uh, 1,000 per week. So that's just my strategy, my recipe of how to consistently make on average 1,000 per week using the five and one minute only, using price action only. That's it. So let's go over and look at another day. Here's the five minute on the left side. Here's the one minute on the right side. Um, we'll go over thir Thursday now. So I'm just gonna scroll back to Thursday, February 1st. And here is the open around 9.30. Let me just get there now on the one minute chart. And it's very simple, right? We don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't have to have a lot of indicators on the screen. Uh, in my opinion, it just doesn't help. It's actually raw price action. Uh, you can use volume. I know volume definitely does help, but raw price action and market structure is the way to go. So um, you can see we are bearish in the pre-market, 9 a.m. bearish, 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 right? We are bearish. So we want to look for a time that we shift bullish. So we're bearish, 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 bearish. Uh, we break bullish here at 10.05. So 10.05, 
candle close, we got above the highs. So now, uh, 10.05, this is the 10.05 candle, which means it's 10, 10 a.m. We're gonna look at the one minute chart. Let's look for a pullback on the one minute chart and then a higher low engulfing, okay? Here is where we're gonna get that. So this is an example of what's gonna happen a lot of times, and that's why it's just over a 50% win rate. So 10, 10 a.m., right here, we wanna see a pullback. Here's a pullback, higher low engulfing right here. We wanna put the stop below the swing low to the left, 17 point stop. Go for that two to one risk reward ratio, just like that. We get stopped out, okay? Boom, now you wanna look for the next engulfing after the pullback. You can see in the five minute, we're still bullish. We're just pulling into the order block to the left. We took that loss of 17 points. Here's the next engulfing. And reason why we're taking it again, and it's still a higher low engulfing is because the five minute got the, bear, the bullish market structure, and then as it's pulling back, it's still in bullish market structure on the five minutes. So we're looking for the long again. That's, this is what, this is actually what happens most of the time. Usually you don't get in the first time. It usually happens on the second time. So the stop loss is gonna be 13 points. Uh, two to one is gonna be 26 points. But uh, at this point, since I know it's bullish market structure, I'm going to be targeting the highs to the left, which is right here at 35 points. 13 uh, point stop loss, target the highest left 35 points. So at this point, you know, we lost 17 points here. It, you can take it, you can take it again and feel okay to take it again because your risk reward ratio is a two to one and it just takes one trade to make up the losses and more. So net net, we're plus 18 points. Now let me know in the comments down below if this doesn't make sense to you. Um, again, if, if it does make sense, it will make sense if you just watched my video that I have posted on my uh, trading strategy and but we're now you know two trades in the morning right there and now we, we're not going to take another trade unless we go bearish and we actually do get that so here we're bullish right push bullish took up the highs that's how we got this win right here we're net 18 points at this time let me just write down net 18 points now if we go bearish on the five minute we want to look for a pullback on the one minute so now here higher higher low higher high boom took out this wick low to the left so we shifted bearish at the end of the 1050 candle, which means 1055. What are we looking for? We're looking for a short. We're looking for a short. So now that we took out that, we want to look for a short at about 1055. So 1055. We got a pullback and another engulfing. 1055 pushed up, next engulfing, short the next engulfing after the pullback. Stop is going to be above the high. And it's always a two to one. So we shifted bullish, uh, shifted bearish, two to one, 26 point TP. And then we'll see that we get stopped out right here. Now the problem here is we had a series of higher lows on the five minutes and higher highs. And we're unable to take this short again because this is 11.25 uh, AM. And if you just go over to 11.25, it's right here. At this point, we've pushed up that we've taken out highs to the left. And we're not and we're not able to take the short again so at this point we have a 13 13 uh, dollar loss and then we shifted bullish and we got the best confirmation because of the bullish engulfing close on the five minute at 11 30. so the end of this 11 30 candle is 11 35 we're now looking for longs after 11 35 after a, a pullback on the one minute so 11 35 is right here uh, 1134 is right here. This is where it ends. Uh, here's a pullback and then next engulfing, higher long engulfing, 1138 candle. We go for the long, stop below the recent swing lows to the left. Target is a two to one. So the stop is about 13 points. Target is 26 points. And you can see that that one hits about 12 o'clock and that's when we're done trading. So you can see we took, um, Let's round up even. Minus 14 point loss in the short. It shifted back to bullish. We went back into the long and we got a 26 point TP, I believe it was. Yeah, 26 point TP on the long. So again, this one's net 12 points. This is net 18 points from the first couple trades. Net 12 points on the next couple trades. And this is all in the morning session only. So now we took four trades in the morning, uh, you know, we're done at that point, it's a lot of trades, net 12 points, uh, it's lunchtime, so net net is plus 30 points. If we're using one contract, 
one con times 20 a point equals plus 600 on the day. So in two trading days, we saw last, uh, the, you know, Friday was plus $400. This one's plus $600. Uh, so in two trading days, you saw we were net plus 1K USD in two trading days. So I can keep going on with examples and examples. Um, I could do a full hour of this if, if you wanted to, but uh, I hope you get the point. I hope you understand this trading strategy. And let me know in the comments down below what you want to know more about. But this is how you can get funded with Apex and start learning, uh, start earning a thousand a week, thousands per month with only $50 of your own money or $100 of your own money using these prop firms once you have a tr profitable trading strategy. Thanks so much for watching. Look, so, look out for our next video coming out next weekend and I'll see you in the next one.